Ciao ragazzi! This is Talk Cultural TV on YouTube. Ciao a tutti! Welcome to this episode of Talk Cultural TV. As you know, last night it was the Coppa Italia final and Juventus won 4-0 against AC Milan at the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. And Massimo Allegri is the history man. You could rename him Maximus Allegri. He is the first man ever in all European leagues, not just Italy, to win four consecutive league and cup doubles. A fate that hasn't been done by Juventus great managers such as Marcello Lippi, Giovanni Trapattoni. Even if you look at the great other managers in the game, you're talking Bill Shankly, Bob Paisley, Brian Clough, Munoz, Cruyff, Vincente Del Bosque. They may have won four doubles in their time as managers at clubs, but they've never ever won it in succession. Allegri has broken all records. In terms of Italian domestic football, he's immortal. There's no other way to put it. So as for the game itself, well, the first half was very tight, nil-nil. It was like a chess battle, typical Italian defensive football. Remember the Champions League of 2003? But in the second half, uh, Juventus took the lead through Benarsha, and after that, the floodgates opened. Um, Gianluigi Donnarum with two mistakes. Uh, Douglas Costa shot, of course, where he should have really palmed that aside into the bottom of the net. And later on, of course, Donnarum, after Manzuki, there, he drops it right at the floor, and Benarsha's in again to make it 3 0. And then there's an own goal to make it 4 0. It basically killed off uh, AC Milan. I think the scoreline might be harsher than it suggests, but. Juventus just overpowered them. Reno Gattuso, you know, I've got to say, a man who gave his all as a player, I, what did surprise me was the lack of fight from AC Milan in the second half. As soon as they went 1-0 down, they just crumbled. Their heads dropped. It was too easy for Juventus. Yes, we've said this time and time again, you can use the excuse, well, Juventus have got the money, they've got better players. We're not disputing that, but there's something called fight at the end of it. Now, Bonaccio, of course, I've just mentioned, scored twice. He owed a massive debt after when they lost to Napoli at home at the Alliance Arena. All the press criticised him, saying he wasn't good enough to be in the team. He didn't man Mark Kula Bali for the header goal. But he responds, you know, two goals in the Coppa Italia final. You know, it's just common in Italian football. No matter how what good you do, you always get remembered for your stakes. Well, I think he answered his critics last night with those two goals in the final. So when we talk about Benarsha, who redeemed himself... A man that might have to redeem himself, and that was Gianluigi Donnarumma. You know, he's had a great season in goal. Two basic errors last night. It's easy, I wouldn't say it cost his team. I think Juventus would have beaten them anyway. Um, but obviously, at the end of the game, what did surprise me was, of course, he, Milan's second choice goalkeeper is trying to console him, and he didn't want it. I think his body language, I think Donnarumma is on his way out of AC Man. Well, they've signed Pepe Reina on a pre contract agreement. You don't go sign him someone who's the first choice of Napoli just to sit on the bench. Uh, where does Donnarumma going to go? It's more likely it's going to be Paris Saint-Germain, we believe. Real Madrid are interested, but they, it's also understood they are more interested in Alisson from Roma. So I think it's fair to say Donnarumma is going to leave Italian football for the time being, having never won a trophy. Now, contrary to newspaper reports that we mentioned earlier on in the week, Massimo Allegri is high on Arsenal's list. In fact, the preferred candidate to replace Arsene Wenger, who has been at the Gunners Helm for 22 years. It was believed between him and Luis Enrique, ex-Roma and Barcelona manager. Enrique Sose priced himself out of the job. Allegri is now preferred candidate to replace Arsene Wenger. Now, in terms of Italian football, domestically, he's now immortal. You know, to win the Coppa Italia and Scudetto every season. You know, we mentioned earlier that Juventus have never done that. You know, Marcello Lippi, Giovanni Trapattoni never achieved that. Before Allegri came in, Juventus hadn't won the Coppa Italia since 1995. So that was 20 years before they won the competition. Okay, you can say, well, they didn't maybe take it serious in the past. You know, the league and the Champions League was probably high on their wish list. You can also say Italian football isn't what it used to be. I'm not disputing that. La Liga, well, the Premier League, and maybe the Bundesliga are above Italian football. We're probably the fourth best league in the world right now. But even still, you know, okay, he's had more money than all the other teams. That's another thing you could probably say in his favour. But I think what he's achieved, you know, you can't question it. He definitely has to go down and hit Juventus folklore history as one of their greatest ever managers. Yes, they've lost two Champions League finals. OK, Marcello Lippi took them to three consecutive finals, but they lost two then. But you know, I think he's personally, maybe, has he taken Juventus as far as he can? Well, if he has, I 
still be sad to see him leave Italian football. At the same time, though, Italian managers now, if they want to progress their career, they have to move out of Serie A. Look at Antonio Conte. His time at Chelsea might be coming to an end, but he's won the Premier League. He had to leave to further his career leave Serie A. You know, he's had the national job before that. I think with Allegri now, it is a perfect chance. Arsenal have got all the resources in place. You know, maybe the last few years they haven't challenged for the Premier League. With Allegri at the helm, I'm sure they'll definitely be a major force again. Now, if Allegri does move to Arsenal or takes a job elsewhere, it's believed that Carlo Ancelotti is the favourite to replace him in Turin. Now, Ancelotti had a spell in charge of Juventus in the late 90s. It's fair to say it wasn't a successful one. They lost the league to AC Milan in 99, Lazio in 2000. He was then sacked in 2001, of course, when Roma won the Scudetto. Uh, he, was he was branded as a loser and nearly man at Juventus. It was only when he went to AC Milan and won the Champions League in 2003. Then a lot of trophies after that followed for Ancelotti at AC Milan. Uh, would they have him back? I'm sure they jumped for joy. You know, I'm surprised Ancelotti hasn't been poached maybe by Arsenal or even the Italian job. It's believed he was interested there, but... That looks nice if it's now going to be Roberto Mancini. But as for Massimo Allegri's legacy at Juventus, you know, he was appointed the day after Antonio Conte had resigned. Now, replacing Conte was never going to be easy. He was a cult hero as a player and a manager. He broke Juventus's winless streak in Serie A when they were delivered the title in 2012. Of course, they all also went a season unbeaten. Now, because of Allegri's Milan links and the Conte factor, I don't know the exact split or the exact figure. He's never been universally accepted by the Bianconeri to Fossi. But I think in this way, he's answered his critics, you know, to win four domestic, both leagues and cups every season he's been there. The Angeli family in Juventus have always had an obsession with the Champions League, you know. OK, that 2015, you can say that was against the odds. I expected Barcelona to beat them. I think last year in Cardiff, that was their chance. And it looked as if they were going to do it until they crumbled in the second half. But when Allegri walks away, I've got to say, he's, he's definitely been a success at Juventus. Whether they, some of the Tafossi like him or don't, you cannot argue with his record. And I think even if it's Ancelotti, whoever comes in, to, if they're going to repeat that fate of four consecutive leagues and Coppa Italia, I can't see that being done, again, not just at Juventus, but in Italian football for a while. It's never been done in European football, like we mentioned already, and all the other famous managers that failed there. I think you have to put that Allegri down as a winner. You know, not even before Juventus, he won the title in the first season at AC Milan. So it's not just Juventus. You can't just use the fact that they've had more money than others because they didn't have that much to spend at AC Milan when he was under the tutelage of Berlusconi. So um, I think this might be good buy for the man known as Max, but he leaves definitely a tough act to follow for whoever takes over at Juventus. Now, just before we go, on to matters this weekend in Serie A. Now, the all eyes now with the Scudetto being wrapped up is on the battle for Champions League football. But the big match does involve the Bianconeri, the champions, Juventus. They are away to Roma at the Stadio Olimpico. Now, the Giallo Rossi Roma only need a point to guarantee Champions League football. The reason being that the teams in 4th and 5th, that is Lazio and Inter Milan respectively, play each other on the last day at the Stadio Olimpico. So Roma just need that point to guarantee Champions League football for next year automatically. However, Juventus won't go to the Olimpico and roll over. Their record doesn't bode well, I will admit. But the Giallo Rossi also won't want a point. They will want to go out to prove a point and beat Juventus, as everyone does in Serie A. The Bianco Celesta, that's Lazio. Since they lost Ciro Mobile to Torino, they have failed to win their last two games. Inter Milan, of course, they also lost to Derby d'Italia. It's going to be an interesting finale in terms of the battle for Champions League probably more so than the Scudetto race itself was towards the end. Thanks for watching this episode of Talk Cultural TV and tell us what you thought of last night's final. Have we seen one of the best Juventus sides ever to win four domestic leagues and cups on the trot? Or is it a case of Italian football being at its lowest ever ebb? Is Massimo Allegri up there with the Juventus great managers, the likes of Marcello Lippi and Giovanni Trapattoni? Tell us what you think. Like, comment below and don't forget to subscribe to Talk Cultural TV. Also, check out the links below on Instagram, Twitter and Snapchat for all news, talk culture, TV and Italian football related. Also, don't forget to give us a like on Facebook. Arrivederci. Ciao.